Um, this is a presentation about design and why we need it. Well, in brief, before we, we describe design, let's say where is design? Where can, we, where can we find design? From clothes to drawings and graphic design elements to editorial design, uh, all the magazines and the books you've ever read, all the sketches you've ever seen, all the blueprints any technician and engineer has ever used or designed, uh, from products to movies to how a building looks inside and out, from games to websites and apps, uh, all of these contain and um, all of these have a uh, um, has, have as a very strong and very important uh, uh, part uh, the design. Design is solving the problem, uh, making it look good and making it easy to use. This is uh, um, these are one of the uh, some of the most important things about design. So this is what makes design important, and this is what makes design design. Um, you notice, uh, I hope that the first thing here is to solve the problem. This is the most important issue. Um, let's talk about the interface. Does anybody know what an interface is? Come on, don't be shy. Okay, let's take a basic object. Um, a cup has an interface. This is the interface of the cup. This is what you use to actually use the cup. This is what separates you from the object itself. And uh, that's basically the, the definition of the, of the interface. It's what you use to interact with the object you're, you want to interact with. Uh, there are many types of cups, basically. <laughs> so from uh, 3,000 years ago to just yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, there are many types. I mean, uh, a, a cup can be varied in uh, functionality and interface. These cups, for example, offer a lot more than one interface to them. For example, the one on the right, uh, bottom right, uh, also has some gradings, which you can use either from the side and from the top. This is a, a mixture of two interfaces, uh, one that uh, allows you to hold it and one that allows you to actually see and measure visually how much liquid or uh, whatever else you put in it there is in the, in the cup. Uh, there are many types of interfaces. Take a door, for example, a doorknob. Um, all of these supply the same uh, functionality. They allow you to open the door. Some of them are easier to use. Some of them are harder to use. Some of them look better than others. Some of them are old. Some of them are new. Uh, the idea is that the interface is one of the most important elements in design. And take a look at these doors. Uh, how do you think they open? They don't. Good answer. <laughs> how, how have you realized that fact? Wow. It's a common problem. No, no, no. You, you just guessed. No, no, no. <laughs> Take a look on the, on the top right here. This door is locked. Please use oh. alternate exit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody realized that. <laughs> um, this is one of the problems of interfaces usually, because uh, an interface should be very easy to understand and to, and to use. These uh, doors, which are objects, which have interfaces uh, that uh, consist of the doorknobs, uh, allow a lot of different actions performed. You can open them uh, visually, at least. The signals, signals they send to you are uh, mixed. You can either open them uh, by pushing or pulling. But in this case, you can't open them at all. So uh, this is a problem in design. We design interfaces, and uh, most of the practicality which they should uh, uh, encompass doesn't exist. Um, part of the issue with doors and doorknobs uh, was resolved by labeling them. And this is another common practice in design. It's, just not, it's, it's not only about doors and doorknobs. Uh, pu the push and pull signs have been used for a long time to signal what, uh, what, a door, uh, uh, what the interface of the door can do. But uh, they often backfire. Uh, this is in uh, German. I'm sorry about that if you uh, have no idea uh, how, uh, what the German names mean. But this is pull and push. And you can see both of them because the, the glass is transparent and they stick to both sides. So you don't really know how to open that door. 
unfortunately. And um, of course, if you think about it just a little bit, th these are called Norman doors, by the way, from uh, Nielsen, uh, from the Nielsen and Norman group. Um, um, the Norman guy uh, is uh, one of the best minds in design right now. He's he's still alive, and uh, he uh, came up with the term Norman door for doors that aren't really easy to use, and they defeat the purpose of uh, uh, existing, more or less. So a design decision must be taken, and some smart people already took it and um, designed a door which doesn't allow for it to be pulled when you can't actually pull it, and doesn't allow it, I mean, it does allow for it to be pushed, but since it's uh, very, um, since the doorknob is vertical, usually pull it first. That's a, a studied uh, reaction to it. Okay. We've covered what is design and uh, what the interface means. Let's uh, talk about discoverability, feedback, and affordances. Uh, these are three terms which uh, are the three words I, I'd like you to, to leave with today from this presentation. Um, they're very, very important in design. And whenever you see a design, you need to look for these to evaluate how good the design is. Discoverability answers the question, can you realize what you can do with an interface from the first interaction? From the first time you see the interface, can you, can you know what it does? Can you know how to interact with it? And uh, is the usage clear enough? As we saw with the doors, you had the doorknobs, and everybody knows how doorknobs work, but you don't really have a way of telling uh, how that interaction goes. Uh, I mean, do you push it or pull it, except if you have uh, good design or labels, which is not that good design. Uh, how do you think an old man uh, would rate the usability of these two uh, remote controls? I mean, how discoverable is the right one versus the left one? Do you realize what the left hand does from the first three seconds you look at it? Yes, of course you do, because it's, it's quite easy to understand. Up and down is the volume, left and right are the channels, and you have an on button and an off button, and very hidden away, because you don't use it that often, an AV button, which switches to the uh, video recorder. On the right, you have a very, very complicated inter interface with a lot of functions, but the core features probably can be achieved with the, uh, um, the previous interface for a TV. I mean, who uses all these features in a TV, really? OK, the second part of the, the equation, discoverability plus feedback equals affordances, is feedback. Feedback answers the question, can you acknowledge that you have used the interface in any way after you've used it, so, or, or uh, during the time you use it? And does it show you that you've used it? For example, uh, when you turn on the lights, uh, some lights are neon, and they uh, react uh, not that fast to being open. And uh, that's bad feedback, because the design should uh, be built in such a way that uh, you should know that uh, those lights will come on, even if you flick it uh, very rapidly. So uh, speed is a very important issue in feedback. The, the sooner you get the feedback, the better the design is, because the better you know how to, in, how to uh, perceive that feedback. OK. Let's talk about the simplest site in the world. This is a banner, two paragraphs, and perhaps a bit more. But you can't really tell, right? It says, hi, on this site, you can create an account. If, you've already, uh, if you already have one, you can log in. How can you do that? Does anybody know from the first glance? I'm not sure they do. What if you add a very simple thing, a very vis uh, simple visual cue like this? Everybody knows how a link looks because of Google and not only Google. So now perhaps it's clearer because you've added some affordances. This is what an affordance is. You have a visual cue that something is actionable. And when you hover over it, you have feedback. OK, this is clickable. This does something when I hover over it. So these are called affordances. Uh, this is a slightly different version of the landing page. 
it has a very large register button and the smaller paragraph with uh, the, the question, do you ha already have an account and a link to log in? Um, how do you rate the two? How, which, which one is better? The second one is better. It's better designed. But why is it better designed? I have a big button. Action. Call to action button. Exactly. <laughs> very clear call to actions and very clear affordances. Right? There are other design principles involved in this um, version. Hierarchy. So the register button is uh, uh, much bigger than the others. Contrast. The register button is actually a button. You can see it's a button. It has a shadow and everything. <laughs> um, and the, the text is smaller. Uh, you have focus. So the eye of the user, because of the uh, contrast we mentioned earlier, focuses on the most important thing you can do here. And that's to register. And then it goes to the right and uh, reads the text. There's harmony because the colors are identical from, for the register button and the uh, link. And there's equilibrium because it's roughly half size of the page and the other half is uh, taken by the text. So uh, these are very, very simple principles uh, any design should have and you should look for them for discoverability, feedback and in general affordances. And here are some great examples uh, to, to leave you with. This is a polymorphic design. This is something that becomes something else. And that becoming is uh, fluid, and you can actually see how it changes across time. This is a table, a very expensive table. It's about 6,000 6, euros. <laughs> um, this is skeuomorphic design. Uh, an eraser with the delete uh, um, key. Uh, some uh, speakers with an actual speaker icon used. Um, this is a piggy bank bomb uh, in, on which you can write the product you, you're interested in buying uh, with uh, uh, the money you raised. And uh, after you break it, the bomb is off and uh, you get to buy the stuff you want. This is a mouse cursor, <laughs> a mouse featuring the mouse cursor, I mean, in the form of a mouse cursor. This isn't really usable, by the way. It's Perhaps it's usable. I'm not sure if it is. But the idea is that. Design, I mean, the three things I mentioned earlier, um, let's go back to them for just a bit. Solving the problem, making it beautiful, and making it easy to use are often in various uh, degrees used in a product or, a, or a, an object or an interface. And uh, that mouse cursor in the shape of, a, that mouse in the shape of a mouse cursor is very beautiful. It's interesting, it's novel, but uh, probably it's not that easy to use. And of course, it does solve the problem because you have a mouse. It's, it acts like a mouse and it, uh, it uh, behaves like a mouse. Okay, some more examples. This is a very uh, uh, popular design with the girls. Uh, it, it, the, the, um, I mean, it says it likes you whenever you look at it. So the right, the right hand side mirror, that, that's what I mean. And uh, another polymorphic design is the like um, uh, ice tray. Because if you put water in them and uh, put it on ice, you then have a very likable uh, cocktail, for example. Uh, this is an, exam an example of multi multifunctionality and extension. Uh, this is a grid-based plug with uh, 2D, um, a 2D distribution of plugs, and you can use it in any way you like. And that I found that interesting. And um, here's another example of good design. It's a glass that says what you're drinking. If you fill it with white liquid, it says it's got milk in it. If you fill it with dark liquid, it says it's got Coke in it. And you fill it, if you fill it with orange liquid, it says it's, it has orange juice in it. It's the same glass, by the way. It doesn't change. It's just the distribution of, of dots inside the, the membrane of the glass. <coughs> so the point is that if you know a bit of good design, you can change the world. And I hope all of you will be interested in finding out what good design is and uh, how to judge it and how to actually enforce it. Because this is a company which has a very large gap in design uh, perspective 
and it, ha it had it for a very long time. We just now managed to move in the right direction with uh, some ideas and some websites we did, but it's far from being perfect. And um, this is uh, what what I'd like us to do: find the the power to to embrace design and uh, learn from it. Any questions? No? Okay, thank you.